Great to see you. Uh, thank you for joining us. We're going to pray for some major prayer requests today. We do have uh, some that have come in, obviously, as usual, on our mobile phone here. And that number is 07570-261-697. And that's where you can text in your personal prayer requests. Also, praise requests and any items of news and fun. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, so we have some which we are going to come to in a moment. But I'd like to turn your attention to our scripture readings for the day. And today, the 30th of June. June. So today is the last day of the month. Yes. Tomorrow, Literally. July. And I know July, July's um, scripture readings are already online there in the Revival Times for June. We will publish the ones for July as well. And also it's been placed on the website for you to follow. But here are the last scripture readings for the month of June. 1 Corinthians 9, Ezekiel 39, Psalm 90, and Ephesians chapter 6. 1 Kings 9, Ezekiel 39, Psalm 90, and Ephesians chapter 6. So, Amanda, shall we get down to prayer straight away? Can you tell us what we're praying for today? These requests haven't come in on the mobile phone. Yes, we're praying today for, it's the 60th, 60th anniversary of independence for D Democratic Republic of Congo. All right. And we're going to pray for that today. Yeah. We're going to pray for Donna. She has asked prayer for her mother and also for herself. She says she's in great hardship. Mm -hmm. uh, we're continuing to pray for France. There's been a request to continue to pray for France as most of the people in state positions are Freemasons. Yeah, well, is, this came out today in, in that request. I didn't mention it yesterday when we prayed about it. Uh, uh, but there was a tremendous uh, Freemasonry involved in the closing down of churches. And uh, there are other, other things as well. Uh, communism is, is involved and, you know, there are communists and communists and certain communists are so, so anti-Christian. Um, and then there is a lot of influence from pressure groups from different religions, including Islam, and some of which uh, we, we have reason, reason to believe are quite radical. So all those pressures. And then, of course, in France, there is this issue of the separation of church and state, which they call la laïcité, which means um, that there is absolutely total separation of church and state. Um, and that can be friendly, um, but it can also be antagonistic. So in other words, um, the, there's... What it, what it tends to be is pretty much control over where you can plant churches or, or ha ha have churches, especially church buildings. And so the churches that hire, you know, conference centers and things like that, they, they can usually find the way through. But when you want to uh, have your own building, uh, you, 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 you know, really, you can't, you can't. And there's also still a lot of antagonism from some parts of the Catholics. So, you know, it really is, it really is a tough situation. But um, we, we need to pray for that, for David and Christine. Um, and the, uh, there has been, there's been some breakthroughs. And the story is what, what they did, knowing that they could not uh, build a church or, or, or t change the use of a building into a church, um, or they tried four or five times. And every time the congregation grew, they tried to get a new building and then they, they were stopped and blocked and they gave the building to the Muslims or they said it couldn't be used for religious purposes and then gave it to the Muslims. I mean, this has really been going on. And eventually they found a, a building which they leased, which is on the outskirts of Paris. And it's a sizable building which they developed. And Christine's an engineer. She helped develop it and uh, put in a bid to purchase it, and it was blocked by the mayor. And um, so the battle is going on. That mayor has been removed. So now it's the future of that building. And what has really happened here is that David and Christine are really part of that community. There's a, there's a police academy, or certainly, I think it's an academy, yeah. just next to it, and they come and use it for socials. It's used for all kinds of different uh, groups of people, different groups and it's, it's, it's not just for a handful of Christians and there's churches there like a Romanian church. A Romanian church was, was meeting and 
a hundred, I met five, six hundred people in, that, in, in those in that, buildings. Yes. And I forget now, something like 14 different church groups they were hosting, as well as social events and, and letting out the whole complex as a, as a conference centre. So it is a remarkable achievement. But we, we do need to pray. Okay, let's get the on. The battle's not over. No. No. Um, yes, so continue to pray for France. Then, Charlie, I confused you with another Charlie from the previous day who, who phoned in yesterday. You're struggling with getting financial support from the government over COVID-19. So mm -hmm. we'll pray into that. And then Abigail sends in uh, as a prayer request, but also she's been blessed by your books, actually. She says many of your books, especially Satan on Mast, has really set her free. Mm. And uh, But she asked for prayer for a broken heart. She's gone through a divorce and she's asking for prayer for that. All right. So, okay. Mm -hmm. So if you pray you for those, I'll, France? I'll pray for France and you mm -hmm. pray for the others. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for this new day. Yes. Father, we just want to bring our prayer request to you this morning, Father God. And we start, We pray for Abigail, Father God. Circumstances are unknown to us, but you know the circumstances. Father God, we pray that she's asked for prayer for a broken heart. Mm -hmm. And yes, we understand there can be no greater rejection than being rejected by the person you married and loved. Mm. And Father, we just pray today, Lord God, that you would, in your great love and mercy, that you would touch Abigail today, Lord, that you would bring healing to her today. Yes, Lord. Father, as she stands with you and draws closer to you, Father God, may the healing power and the love of Jesus heal that broken heart. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. And we remember, Charlie, your struggles and difficulties, I know whose cell you're in. I know your cell leader is being very supportive and helpful to you. So we just pray that you would get your papers together in order to get this breakthrough in the financial support that yes. you're looking for from the government. We just pray that God would bless you and speed up that financial income. Yes, Lord. And Lord, we just pray for Donna. She asks for prayer for her mother. Uh, she seems to think her mother's, or she says her mother's addicted to what I don't know, but she asked for prayer that that addiction over her mother would be broken in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. And she asked for prayer for herself. She says she's in great hardship at the moment. And Lord, the circumstances she hasn't said, we don't know, but Father, you know. So we ask, Father, that you would send your angel to just help her in this situation, Father mm. God, if it's hardship for food or, or, or support, Lord, that there would yes, be Lord. someone there that can reach out to her at this time in jesus name we pray and we th we remember uh, democratic republic of congo this morning exactly 60 years ago today congo democratic of democratic republic of congo received its independence so yeah. father we thank you for that and we pray that today as people celebrate yeah. and rejoice we ask lord for your protection over everyone mm. who celebrates and rejoices today and we ask that the hand of god would just rest upon all christian groups who bring celebrations in their churches in the streets wherever they are Father, we ask that you would bring protection and blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And we pray, Father, for the Christian work which we help uh, with in, uh, in the, Dem in the Dem Democratic Republic. We ask, Father, that you would bless the teaching and preaching of your word and, and the work that Kensington Temple is doing there and the teams that we send and also, Father, the people we team up with. We thank you for the sword of the Spirit which is, being, which is growing in that nation and we ask father for the cell vision which is also being planted in that nation and we pray father that these things will grow and be blessed jesus in jesus name amen, amen. amen. and amen and france yeah i'm going to mm -hmm. come come back to pray for, pray for france That's just okay. say say a few things you know um i, I just wanted to say something when we we're praying about the congo that uh, a moment ago um i I don't know why I feel the need to say this, um, because many people, many people know it. Um, and I just want to make sure that Kensington Temple never drifts away from its, its call to the nations. Its call to the nations. Um, and, um, you know, I, I speak to some people, even leaders sometimes, and um, their mind is just taken up with the day-to-day -day life of their cell, 
group or, or Sunday worship, and of course that's a different pattern now, and there's nothing wrong with those things, of course not. But, but there is, the Kensington Temple is not just a church that meets and gathers in groups in and around London to meet their personal needs, or uh, as we hope, hope one day soon back in, into the building. We're not, we're not just that. We are a church that has a call of God to the nations. Amen. And we are an international church. And the leadership of Kensington Temple must align with the vision of God for the house. It's London and the world for Christ. And thinking about <clears throat> the French speaking vision, m many years ago, I couldn't care to rem remember how many years ago, uh, <laughs> Or certainly more than 20, uh, probably more like 25 years ago. It was in the fairly early stages of my senior leadership and I took over in 1991. And I was being driven to a place in a car on the other side of London. And um, Shakti was my driver at that time. She says, you rest, you prepare. And I was in the back, it went on for so long, this journey, and there was so, so much traffic. And anyway, I was having a bit of a, a doze or a rest, a pray, meditate, all the above. And God spoke to me about France and the French-speaking nations. And of course, Democratic... Re Republic is French-speaking. Yeah, French-speaking yes. as well. And so we, we have taken the cell vision to that nation. Just imagine the influence Kensington Temple has because we obey the Holy Spirit. So I want to pray into that. So we've got France. Uh, uh, that's what... Uh, uh, we pray maybe some more for the Republic, but also for the uh, Central Asia. Now, we have launched a financial appeal uh, so that we can reach Central Asia. And this is in the form, yet again, of the Sword of the Spirit programs. And we have somebody who is, there's this 288 of those programs, half-hour programs, and there's somebody who is willing to put them into Russian, which would be the language that can be broadcast uh, right across that region. And there are thousands and thousands of people who've come to Christ. And they are a persecuted group of people. Um, and n nobody can openly... Um, well, I'll stop there. I'll stop there. But we need to pray for their security. And uh, we need to pray for that finance to come in. We launched a finance appeal. I would check to see how much has come in. I know some had come in, but we need up to $25,000, 20, 20,000 pounds. And we're all in lockdown and people are strapped and, and so on. But we cannot let go of these opportunities that God gives us to be effective. That was 1991 you had that word from the Lord about the French-speaking nations. How, who would know that? Pastor Kemi. And so she would remember 1991. Mm -hmm. So that was the first year. Yeah that I went into the senior leadership. Well, the Holy Spirit didn't hang around, did he? <laughs> he spoke straight away. Okay, let's pray. Father, we thank you for the sense of your grace and your purpose into our lives as a church. And I pray, Father, uh, f uh, again, for the unity of Kensington Temple London City Church. Father, we pray that we will be united under the vision of God and the call of God upon the house. We pray, Father, for financial uh, provision for the vision that you've given us. We pray, Father, for wisdom in how we think about overseas mission, uh, and not just during this lockdown, but beyond that, how we think about it. And we want to be led by your Holy Spirit. Yes. And we thank you, Father, for everything that is done right across our London City Church network. Uh, and some of those things which are done are not necessarily brought to the attention of the central congregations. And the people in the uh, churches, the network churches, in Agape and, and Akusua's church and uh, all over the, the, the French-speaking churches, they are constantly involved in missions and, and, and in Ghana, and not, not, not just missions in the sense of, of preaching, teaching and going and having some few words in, in the churches, but actually actively engaged in, in planting Bible schools, planting 
children's homes, planting schools uh, and so many things. We thank you for all that work. And we pray, Father, that you would stir up the hearts of your people in this house, that we would be faithful to the vision of the Lord for the nations. And for this reason, we raise up to you France again today. And we've looked at all the negative things, but there are some positive things which are happening. There is a hunger. Yes. And there's, there are breakthroughs in many, many churches. There are churches of hundreds. There are yes. churches of thousands now in Paris and in different parts of France. And that, Lord, you are having the final say Amen. by pouring out your Holy Amen. Spirit. We ask, Jesus. Father, for David and Christine, yes, that the, your strategy, your long-term strategy for 15 years, they have been battling for this 15 years of faithfulness where many are telling them, Give up, stop it, don't bother. And now, Father, we ask that there be no more obstacles and that, Lord, you will use them and that you'll push back the powers of darkness and that, Lord, the churches in Paris and in France, the evangelical churches, would rise up and be strong. And we thank you, Father, for the outpouring of your spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And amen. So uh, I'd like us also to move on in prayer. Um, so there, there is, uh, comes out every week a, uh, a, a prayer sheet relating to, for sun, to Sunday prayers. Now, it just happens to be that we get it ready so that we can, we can pray on a, on a Sunday. Mm. So Marco researches this for us. And so every day, every Sunday, I have at least two pages of well-researched, very carefully thought out, mm prayer needs from all all, all over the world. Uh, Now, it's just impossible to pray those through. We'd have to do nothing more the whole Sunday than to pray. And maybe we'll do that one day. Maybe we will just do that one day. Um, Nine o'clock, 11 o'clock, 2.30, 5.30, just prayer, just prayer. No worship. No teaching. Maybe prayer and worship. Okay. <laughs> but what we also do is, you see, we, feed, we fuel prayer right across our network. Now, we have somewhere over 500 people who are registered for our prayer watch. And you can do that if you're not part of it. You just go to kt.org forward slash prayer watch and you will be put on that list. And what we do is we send out that those Sunday prayers, we send them out to around before the weekend to all of the people whom we call the intercessors. And I don't like to call them intercessors uh, as if to say the other people are not. We are all called to be intercessors. All right. So the intercession isn't some special gift that God gives to a few. It is the call of God upon every one of our lives as believers. And so, but still, there are those who, uh, intercessors who register for that. And I'd like you to register for it so that you get more and more uh, of those requests. Then also, each month in the Revival Times, we have a prayer diary as well as a Bible reading program. Mm -hmm. And so uh, you pray through those things. Um, And the cell leaders are supposed to be praying through those things. And there's a lot of supposed to be's in, in the church. And I know that. And uh, everybody must, uh, must do the best they can to keep up with all the things that they could be doing uh, and so forth. But, but it's very important that <laughs> the cells become places of prayer. Then also we know that the, the actual different cell networks, the women's n- network, the men's network, and also many in the, in the um, uh, LCC network have seasons of prayer. There is hardly a week, I want you to listen to this, there's hardly a week that goes by in Kensington Temple without there being 24-hour prayer and fasting. And we like to do that by encouraging people to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit in their groupings. And uh, the people are saying, why don't you, Colin, call the church to prayer and fasting? I want to say, excuse me, where have you been? That's what we are, have been doing for the last four months. And the call for prayer and fasting has come centrally from me. And, and it's coming, I just say it again. We are calling the church to prayer and fasting. What um, we might do is, is specify a particular season. 
but um, it's a lifestyle prayer and fasting. So uh, I want to <clears throat> explain to you that no, there's never been more prayer going on in KTLCC than there is right now. And I, I say to you, we need even more. So don't, don't uh, step it down, step it up. The Wednesday evening prayer meeting is a vital time for us to come and to pray together. I would like to see 100% attendance. I'd like to see 3,000 people there, um, not just the 300 that do uh, come. And um, so we're encouraging you to, to pray and let's pray for that as well. And so um, one of the things that are down here on this list is for churches who, that can reopen for public worship on July the 4th. Well, that's Saturday. And... Um, we, we, we will not be going back to our building in any way in large numbers because the regulations don't allow for that. But, but very soon we will be able to open up at least to do live streaming from there on Sundays, which will be very nice back in the building with a very limited congregation. Um, and we don't know how to work it all out yet, but the building's prepared uh, and all the safety um, All and the risk management. Yeah, the there. risk management's there. So, so it's there. But, but also we want to pray that there'll be a sensible return uh, to buildings, public buildings, not just church buildings. And that also with this uh, incident of uh, when it was very hot last weekend, uh, the weekend before last, and people were flocking to the beach and caused cause problems. Then there's such issues as uh, changes to London's congestion charges. Um, it's increased by 30%. And there are certain churches where, where there are congestion day. charges apply even on Sunday and uh, parking charges. And so uh, people, uh, uh, well, um, yeah, uh, so it's going to be uh, every day of the week, including Sundays now. And so that might block some churches. Westminster Chapel is one of them. They were blocked before with parking. Yeah, they blocked some churches. And, you know, with everything else that's been, that's been hit, it just seems as I'm, I'm in favour of having closed down the churches. I don't think it was an infringement of, of religious freedom. It was sense, common sense. But you, you, get, you get a feeling, you get a feeling that what's happening in coronavirus, what's happening in uh, various experiences... And, and issues around the country and, and the, the lockdown and the returning and, and all of that, um, where you get the sense that, that there's a, a massive spirit of disruption and chaos that is being poured out, a real assignment of destruction, division, disruption and chaos. And usually behind that, it's not just an anti-society thing, it is an anti-Christ thing. Because there's very little that the devil wants to disturb about humanity apart from two things. One, we were created in the image of God and he wants that destroyed. Two, we've been recreated in the image of God and he would do everything he can to, to destroy those who follow Christ. But we <clears throat> are surrounded by the power and protection of God. Amen. Amen. And amen. Amen. And just, are you going to pray? Have I prayed for... Are you praying for... I was just going to... One more prayer request just came in. Mm hmm For Havid. She's asking for prayer for financial... For breakthrough in finances and a job. Okay. We'll bring it into, into our closing okay. prayer. So there, there is um, that. Also, uh, a week ago, Parliament approved a no-fault divorce. Um, and that might sound good because of people have been through acrimonious divorces uh, and painful, painful divorces, which is, but still, um, when you look at it now, this would allow one spouse to impose divorce on the other without their consent. So making marriage easier to dissolve than a phone or tenancy contract. Something's wrong. And then uh, uh, further afield, Hindu extremists in eastern India stabbed and stoned a boy for, to death for his faith. Persecution is, is happening. 
uh, and increasing in different parts of the world. And then we've been praying too for the in increased violences uh, in, in our nation. We recall of the three stabbed to death um, uh, on Saturday the 22nd in, in Reading and those who were stabbed and attacked in Glasgow on Friday the, the 27th. And so there is so much going on and also with, I think, street parties, violence and other forms of protest, <clears throat> there is so much unrest. And Ephesians chapter 6, one of our passages today, says we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against spiritual wickednesses in high places. And our weapons of our warfare are waged against these demonic entities that, that exalt themselves up above the knowledge of Christ. And so this is about how they operate through the minds, through human ideologies, and through uh, doctrines uh, which are, and teachings which are not from God, and also inciting in violence and in so many different ways. But God has defeated them. Amen. Jesus Christ has defeated the principalities and powers, and he's given us spiritual armor that we might stand against them. And so we're going to pray for the protection of all God's people, and we're going to lift up some of these things. I just mention them to you because you'll be able to get these if you register and move forward. So would you like to pray for pray this for and then we... Yes, Father, we're praying for Javi, who's looking for a job and financial breakthrough. Father, we ask in the name of Jesus that that breakthrough would come, Lord. We ask, Father God, that, you would, that she would find a job with her own expertise, mm. that a job that would bring in great financial security to her, break yes, Lord. financially. <clears throat> Father, we just pray for your intervention and your blessing over Javi's life in this mm. whole area, and this request in Jesus' name. Amen, amen and amen. Yes, Father. Father, we thank you for the victory in the spiritual realm. We thank you that Jesus Christ has conquered the enemy, mm. that through his death and resurrection, He's made an open show of them and he has spoiled the principalities and powers. We thank you, Father, that those powers stripped of their, of their power will nevertheless operate in some res respect until the return of Jesus Christ, though they are defeated now. And we, we take our stand in Jesus' name over all of the forces that are working and operating. And we pray against the violent spirit. Yes, we pray Lord. against mm. the spirits of chaos. We pray against the spirits of deception yes. and intimidation and threats. And we, Father, and division, yes, seeking to divide society. Yes. And we pray, Father, for the unity, unity that comes through the gospel of Jesus yes, Christ. And we pray, Father, that you would push back the, all the powers of darkness that seek to operate and to assail the people of God. And Father, we thank you for the anointing of the Holy Spirit, the presence of God yes. who rests upon our lives, yes. and that peace and protection and joy and blessing be upon all of us in Jesus' name. mighty name. Amen. The devil cannot curse whom God has blessed. Amen, amen. and amen. amen.